Let me welcome you to the smoke box. Windows up, couple in rotation. I boxed out about three or four faces. Welcome back to another edition of the Smoke Box for Be Real TV. I'm Dr. Green Thumb with my special guest, Jeremy Twitch Stenberg. You know what I'm saying? And he's up in here. And uh, who you got with you? What do you got? You got the crew with you? I got uh, Fabio over here, Bakes, <laughs> and my boy Beerman over here. Right on. We all need a crew when we're fucking chiefing out like we do. You know what I'm saying? You have to. That's, that's right. my smoke crew most of the time. We're about to chief out. You know what I'm saying? We got them on funky field tips because that's how we do in the smoke box. So you know, light them up when ready, bros. You know, and uh, welcome to the box. Thanks for having us. Word up, man. Now, your credentials are a fucking list. It's like, <laughs> like it, your credentials are like a criminal's rap sheet. You know what I'm saying? Just a list of shit. You know, medalist, it, you know, for, for freestyle motor, motocross and also the fucking races yep. that you fucking do, man. Like, you fucking do it all, bro. <laughs> I try to. I just like to have fun, you know what I mean? And I figured if I'm going to have a job, I might as well enjoy it, right? Yeah. What what got you into freestyle riding in the first place? My pops, man. Like, I grew up down in Spring Valley in San Diego. It was super hood. Super shit. Yeah. Super hood where I grew up. And uh, my dad, just like all my buddies were either like gang members or drug dealers or like I hung out with all the essays. That's like, I was like the white kid in the neighborhood, you know? Right. So my dad every day would just be like take me riding for like years like he'd come pick me up from school and fucking riding gear and be like oh he has a dentist appointment and walk outside all our bikes are in the truck like huh. so that's kind of like where it started like he was just trying to keep me out of the neighborhood and just keep me busy and then it literally just turned into a job one day i ran into the right dude at the right time and they're like yo we're starting this thing called freestyle i'm like mm. what <clears throat> so i told my pops i'm like yo these guys want to pay me to wear their clothes and jump my dad's like no nah. like we're going racing but i'm like he's like let's go let's go hear the meeting you know so these guys saw you jump saw your potential and was like hey yeah, they're like, we're going to start this revolution of freestyle motocross. And back then, it was like you either raced or you didn't race. And that's like where it started for me. And and uh, did you have like a fucking influence? Because, I mean, you know, there was a lot of, I mean, motocross has been around forever. I mean, you know, with the super crosses and then they switch it up into the freestyle eventually. Yeah, my guy was always like Jeremy McGrath. Like, I used yeah. to watch Jeremy McGrath and I'm like, this dude is bad. Like, the, the godfather dopest, they yeah. called him, yeah. No, that's Metzger. No, that's Metzger, Metzger that's the, right. Yeah, McGrath Metzger is too. the other guy, yeah. But like, I always like envisioned like, I'm going to be a racer. I want to be like McGrath, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then when the freestyle came along, it was... If it wasn't for dudes like Medsker, Deegan, and Link Ogle, I wouldn't be where I am. Like, those are the dudes that, like, they changed certified the whole game. me in. You know what I mean? Like, they, I, I was a young dude hanging out with these dudes that were already doing the shit. Word up, man. I, I can remember when that whole thing hit. It just, like, changed the way people did shit on a bike. Like, people, like, moves got more inventive. Like, every more, weekend. More challenging. You know, it wasn't the same motocross that people were used to seeing. It was, like, you know it was more of like the like and there was always this way that everyone thought you had to go and we were like fuck you we're gonna do it our way and have fun doing it and we're gonna party and we're gonna have fun and just it was like our lifestyle we were already doing it but no one really knew about it then. yeah and what's crazy is it 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 was bigger tricks but people don't realize with the bigger tricks it's bigger the risk oh yeah i've been broke off plenty of times i'm actually just coming off a broken leg right now from two months ago and uh, yeah, it happens, you know what I mean? But when I ever get hurt, like a lot of my boys don't get hurt. they like, fuck, this sucks. I'm like, well, fuck, I kind of got a paid vacation. Now I can hang out with my family and my kids more and just chill. Like, right. Enjoy it. You got to make the best of it. You're hurt. You like, make fuck the it. best of it. Now, we, I think we talked about this uh, about a week back or some shit at the Jungle Boys spot. Shout out to the Jungle Boys TLC. That's all I'm smoking, dog. You know what I'm saying? Game. Um, you talked about like the, how many bones you had broken in your body. <laughs> how, how, how many bones have you broken in your body? I've never really counted, but I've done like I've done like each angle like six times. I've compounded my tib fib, shattered my heel, broken my talus, I've crushed vertebrae, um, lacerated my liver, collapsed my lung. I've broken each wrist like four or five times. Um, and not, I've been pretty lucky with getting knocked out. I didn't really get knocked out too many times. Like, I've had some homies that are, like, on the Mostly verge of, Mostly bodily like, shit, not, not your head. Either. Yeah. And I can deal with it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've never, like, really, like, freaked out when I've broken something. I've always just been like, well, fuck. You've embraced... Bones hanging out. We gotta go to the yeah. hospital. Like, let's get this over with, you know? You've embraced the fact that this is a part of this game right here. Yeah. 
I think is. I think when you do that, you know, it, it, it does make all that shit easier, you know. It's less shocking to you, you know, like, oh shit, I just broke my fucking leg. Well, when I always looked at the dudes that were winning, I'm like, you gotta take a risk. I'm like, the dudes that are winning are making money. I'm like, I wanna make money. Like, this is fun, but like, I see dudes like buying houses, buying Benzes. I'm like, I want that shit. So that's when I was like, it was probably like a, there was like a year and a half where I quit smoking weeks. I had to go to court a lot. Yeah. And that's like when I started getting my game together and just riding every single day and got good. And that's like when I started killing it. And then as soon as all my court shows up, I started smoking again. Still stayed on top, and I just like from there it was just like contest after contest after contest. It was so repetitive, it was easy. You just go out and do the same shit you did the week before, and you'd win, you know? Yeah. Well, what would you say your your hardest contest was? Who, who gave you the 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 I guess the biggest competition? Like if you had a rival, like you know, what was the hardest one? Like to dig out? They were all fucking hard, but like the one that stands out the most to me is a. Uh, Probably my very first gold medal ever, right here at Staples Center, outside in the parking lot. Like mm. I was on the Tony Hawk Boom Boom Hook Jump, hook jump Tour that year, yeah. and uh, there was two jumps. There was a, a ramp, and then like a 90 foot dirt hit. And me and my boy were like, "Oh, we're gonna do all our shit with a 90 foot dirt hit." And back then, no one was really flipping the dirt. Mm. And I got there, and like Pastrana, Bartram, all these dudes were like, "Oh, we need to take this jump out. No one's gonna jump it." And I'm like, "Fuck you! I'm flipping it." And everyone's like, "You ain't no one flipping this jump." You know what I mean? <laughs> Went out, flipped it, and right then I was like. I looked at everyone, I'm like, no one else even, one, only one other dude jumped the jump. I'm like, I'm gonna fucking win, you know? Right. So it just put me into the next day so confident. And to go out and beat Pastrana and my boy at the time, Nate Adams, I'm like, those wow. dudes were like those at the peak and I beat names, them. Huge names, huge yeah. names, yeah. And uh, I don't know, it's crazy to think, like just riding dirt bike, Riding dirt bikes and smoking weed is like, it's how I've met everyone I know in my life right now, you know what I mean? Right. It's crazy what weed and dirt bikes have brought me to and who I've met and what I've done and so I've traveled the world riding dirt bikes, like, that's that's fun. Crazy. You know, a lot of people could say that, that's for sure. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it, it's obviously taking you to places that you never thought you'd go and it's introduced you a lot of, to a lot of different people, man. Who's, who's the, what, what's, what's, uh, who's the trippiest person that you never thought you'd meet? Like, and maybe blazed with at that. Man, I don't know. There's been, there's a lot of people that I've tripped on like blazing with. Like lately, like just recently, me and my boy Beerman were up in LA and we got to go blaze with Chevy Woods. I was like, damn, like Chevy no Woods. fucking way, you know? Shout out to Chevy. Yeah, and then same thing like my boy uh, MGK. Like that's, I've always looked at that dude. I'm like, I know people that know him. And then we became boys and like smoke with them. And I would say like when I was like mostly starstruck with smoking with anyone was uh, Johnny Richter and D-Loke. From Cottonmouth Kings, from like Cottonmouth back Kings. then, like I was so hyped to meet them. I remember meeting them, and I'm like, these are like the dudes I look up to. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, because those, was... those guys are down your way. Like, they're, yeah, they're towards OC. You're and up it was cool. San Diego, right? It was yeah, it was like hour north of San Diego. Yeah. But what was cool is like, I, they were just a pump, just as pumped to meet me as I was to meet them. So it was <laughs> yeah. like a cool deal, you know? Yeah, mutual fans. Yeah, exactly. Right and on. had no clue that we I would ever run into them at that time. Word up. It's crazy. So like on, on like when you've gotten hurt, was it on practice runs or was it during competitions or almost, a combination of both? I'd say almost every time I've been hurt is at competition or out free riding. Like, cause contest was cool. Like it, I phased that out. I kind of seen like the whole Instagram thing coming. Like when it came, I'm like, okay, I need to be more viral. I need to do videos. I'm like, this is gonna be my future. And sure enough, that's what it turned into. So I've been like, I've always wanted to be like a free rider, like snowboarder. You can make a job being a backcountry dude, skateboarding street skating you can make a job doing that i'm like why can't moto do that like no one ever broke that yeah. mold so i was like i'm gonna change this mold like i'm gonna go get paid to have fun riding my dirt bike now yeah and boom now it's here like kinda five like, years later kind of like how laird hamilton was doing yeah. his videos all his big wave shit yeah it's crazy i could see that that's that's a solid move right there man yeah. so what's 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 um what do you got going aside from the riding i noticed that you you know you've been you know um in the cannabis world <laughs> a lot lately you you, you you thinking about jumping in that lane now too yeah i definitely want to like i've always smoked weed like you know what i mean since it was crazy my dad gave me a yearbook the other day and i'm looking at all the comments from sixth grade and everyone's like oh i can't wait to smoke weed and ride bmx this summer and i'm starting looking like damn you're like 12 13 years old yeah. you know and weed's always been a part of my life like whenever i get hurt like i've seen so many of my, my boys get hooked on pain pills where i'm like eh I'll eat them when I need them when I hurt, but then I'd way rather smoke weed and forget that I'm hurt and watch TV for an hour, you know? Yeah. So, for me, I would definitely love to get in the weed game. It's been a part of my life since I was 12 or 13 years old. So it's safe to say that when, you know, like if you and you know, you get an injury, you're fucking pretty much medicating. You do, yeah. you do the CBDs or you just 
still smoking like you know i just recently started trying to cbd is this last two months ago when i broke my leg uh what is it i met him at the weed maps party flower of life is that what it is yeah, flower. yeah flower of life they gave me some rubs and then uh my other boy gave me some rubs and i started using that the whole time i was hurt didn't eat one pain pill anytime i'd hurt i just rub this shit on it and it worked so i was just like fuck I don't know if it's mental or if it's really working, but it, it made me not take one pain pill the whole time I was hurt. That's crazy. But it tell, it, it's, it's, it's the truth of it is that more people are using the CBDs now. A lot of athletes are using it more often. A lot of football players, you hear about that, basketball players. And, you know, it, it's, it's proved its use in, in its healing properties, man, in, in so many ways, man. It makes sense that if somebody were to, you know, in your field, you know, instead of taking those painkillers, they medicate instead, whether it's THC or just CBD. Yeah, and a lot of people are like, oh, like, I can't believe you smoke weed. Like, I'm unfollowing you and shit like that. It's funny to me because it's <laughs> like, I, I would rather smoke weed and chill than go out and get wasted and fucking run someone's kid over or something. You know what I mean? Like, drinking yeah. and driving. I'm like, it's just crazy to me. Like, people try to, like, downplay or down look weed so hard these days, and it's like, it ain't shit. They'd rather, they, they're more comfortable with you popping the pills than they are smoking the weed, and that's disturbing. Yeah, exactly. There are studies on what the fucking pills do to you, you know, and, and how bad they are for you, you know, in the long-term usage. And they have studies on weed, too, in spite <laughs> of the, that they might say that they, that they, they didn't don't. Do, yeah. But they do, and all that stuff is in the contrary to what they've always said in the negative form of it you know what i mean none of that really exists yeah. it's all beneficial and they won't never say it because you know most of the time any naysayers are in the you know pockets of a pharmaceutical company but the people don't know that so they just no, they have no them, clue they just you know they just go with what they're told they just go with what they're told unfortunately don't always go with what you're told <laughs> word up man so all right since since we're in the box you know what i mean and I, 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 you guys said what you guys were smoking up, and it was Jungle Boy stuff. Yep. It was shortcake and uh, wedding cake. Wedding cake. Well, what's your favorite strain you like to smoke of all time? Is favorite it, of is it, all is, time. Is it the wedding cake, shortcake? I mean, those are fucking awesome. They're we were fire, there. We were yeah. there with their Jungle cake. Yeah. <laughs> we said shout out to Schoolboy Q because Schoolboy Q was there when we were talking about doing the smoke <laughs> yeah. box and we were smoking some of that Jungle cake from uh you know jungle boys and uh awesome pretty dope yeah yeah, yeah so awesome. favorite strain of all time i don't know i used to love the blue dream i thought the blue dream was always fire that was one of my favorites <laughs> yeah. for sure and then uh lately now for sure the wedding cake i just the taste the smell all and anything you get from jungle boys is fire yeah. it tastes good it is you know they don't have one strain that y you'd be like oh don't smoke I don't, that i don't, I don't like want it that. you'd want that too you know, even though you got all the other ones, you'd see that one. Fuck, I want that one too. Yeah. You gotta leave with like a fucking grab bag when you leave there, cause all well, the first flavors. time I left there, I was pretty damn excited. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure Schoolboy Q was too. <laughs> yeah. Are yeah. you seen his bags yeah, rolling he out? He had a great fucking. He had a nice little array of flavors. That, uh, he had everything. The boys gave him, man. That that was awesome. That was good times. Word up, man. So what's what's next for you, brother? Next for me, I don't know. I'm talking to some rally teams right now. I might race some rally car this year. Filming a lot right now. I got my new movie getting ready to come out, Chasing the Storm, in like June, which is just me, all my boys just free riding, having fun, building jumps, and just uh, try to show more lifestyle in my videos and shit like that too, because everyone sees us riding, but not everyone gets to see like personality. And I'm big on personality. That's like why I like some of the dudes I like because of their personalities. You know what I mean? So for me, I'm trying to showcase more of that in my movies, and that's just basically what we've been doing, just filming a lot. Word up. If a kid came up to you and said he wanted to fucking learn how to ride, what what would be the first thing you tell him? Yeah, I, you got a bike? Like, if you got a bike, like, <laughs> ride. Like, that's literally all it is. It's just, like, picking up your bike, bike and riding. And the more you ride, the better you get. The more comfortable you feel, the more shit you're going to go for. And that's just how it is, man. Like, I just tell kids, like, kids hit me up all the time, like, ah, oh, I'm trying this, I'm trying that. And, like, I'll try to get pointers to an extent, but it's, like, you kind of almost have to teach yourself. It's hard. Like, you could tell someone how to grow weed. <laughs> doesn't mean they're gonna grow weed you, know yeah. I mean? you can tell someone how to do a trick doesn't mean they're gonna do the trick sometimes people catch on sometimes people don't but yeah when it's like our crew and our group and we're all trying to do something like we all give each other pointers like stuff like that right. so it's more of like you gotta be in the inner circle to yeah. get the real pointers other than that like, let's hang out and it's like 
I already have too many friends. You know what I mean? Like, I can't bring more people into my circle. And people yeah. are like, yo, call us to go ride. I'm like, I already have so many people calling me. I can't let anyone else go because we blow our spots out like that. Yeah. Yeah, that would be fucking crazy. It'd be like too much traffic on when yeah. you're trying to ride. Exactly. And it sucks. Yeah, that would, <laughs> that would suck. Because then it wouldn't be really too free. Nope. You want to be free riding, be you need weight riding. Condensed free condensed. riding. <laughs> condensed free riding. <laughs> Word up. Hey, I want to thank you for taking the time to jump in the box with me, No, brother. thank you. Word up. It is for real. Up in here. Word. Thanks, it is Thanks, smoky. Man. Word. <laughs> Word up. Where could they find you if they wanted, you know, see what you're doing? Hit me on uh, my YouTube, Twitch this <laughs> one, and then my Instagram, Twitch this eight. That's pretty much all I'm rocking. That's what's up, man. Fuck with my man Twitch, you know what I'm saying? And uh, subscribe to the channel, leave comments, and keep it lit. Let me welcome you to the smoke box. Windows up, couple in rotation. I boxed out about three or four faces.